writing the book of Genesis, and especially Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3, and especially the illustration of the garden scene, they are giving us the code definition to the term salvation. They are giving us the code definition to the term salvation. This is a term illustrated from every book of the Bible, when I'm saying Bible again, Genesis to Malachi. This is the code definition for the term salvation found in Genesis chapters 3, 2, and 1. And we've been harping on the garden scene. And we've been seeing this within the garden scene. I'm always saying that the foundational philosophy of the Bible is found in Genesis 1, 2, and 3. I'm always saying that the salvation of the Bible is not what we think. I'm always saying that what we would intend to um, have come up out of the Bible, to have rise up out of the Bible as a philosophy or as a definition for the term salvation or redemption or whatever we would have it, that's not the case. That's not the case. These previous, these past episodes, looking at how the author of the book of Genesis, specifically writing chapter 3 in the illustration of the garden scene, is defining, quote, unquote, gospel. The gospel of the Bible. Again, Genesis to Malachi. The good news, the good tidings, they are wrapped up in that illustration of the garden scene. Author of the book of Genesis knows this. And the way that they are writing, they are showing their reader the intention for their devotional experience. Now, what is the intention of their devotional experience? What is the salvation? Although blatantly said in the pre previous episodes, let's just look at it from a different angle. The illustration of the garden being an illustration of two conflicting philosophies, two conflicting experiences for the mind, for the devotional mind. Author of the book of Genesis is highlighting the one that won, and the one that won is the one that was cursed. And the one that was cursed is the one that has fixed to it so that it may not so easily, so that it cannot so easily find its way to life Imaginary figures joined to a bale. The victor that is and has inherited the curse of such is priest kind. Author writing this. The author writing this is letting their reader know the controversy that the mind within the scriptures has against priest kind. The enemies the enemies holding back the quote-unquote salvation of the scriptures is priest kind. There is a beef between the mind at the core of the scriptures and priest kind. And if we don't know this, we can look at this through the illustration. But if we're not willing to look at it through the illustration, let's just get some verses going. Isaiah 9, 16 and 17. Isaiah 9, 16 and 17. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is an hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And that's key. That's key. Because there is a curse in this verse placed onto the leaders. There is a curse placed onto the leaders, yet the hand of the living creator, the hand of the living God is not yet removed. It's removed from the leaders. For sure, that's what this is saying. It's removed from the leaders. If it was not removed, they would not be, this verse would not exist. It is removed. Yet, there is yet still an open palm symbolizing there is yet still an experience outside of these fallen leaders. 
still going down the line here because it may not be so apparent that to the Bible's mind, priesthood is no good. So still going through the line here because it may not be so apparent that the controversy that the mind within the scriptures have is against priest high, priest kind and priesthood. Micah 3, 9 to 11. Hear this, I pray you, you heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. Ezekiel 13, 18-20 Ezekiel 13, 18-20 And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes. And I love this illustration right here. I love completely because that's, that's the state. That's the state of what priest kind does. That saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people and will you save the souls alive that come unto you? And will you pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies? Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows wherewith Ye there hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt to make them fly. What's this saying? Let's just think about this in practical terms. When you're sitting on a chair and your arms are up on its sides there as an armrest, and there is simply wood there or there is... There's, there's no padding there. Uh, how does that feel to the arm, to your arm, over a period of time? And if you're sitting on a wooden chair or a chair or something that has no padding to it, how does that feel? Well, the illustration here that is, is, that's being drawn is that what is being said by the priest kind, it is similar to the pillows on chairs. It's similar what they're saying, what they're teaching. It's similar to the pillows on chairs. Pillows on chairs are to keep you comfortable. Pillows on chairs, whether they be on the arms or on the seat or on both, they are to make sure you are very comfortable. They are actually to lie to you about the experience of sitting. They don't want you to feel what sitting feels like. Because when you're sitting on nothing that has no comfort, you're going to feel what sitting feels like. And then you're going to feel this discomfort. You're going to want to move a lot or even stand up to move around. That's not what the heads of Israel. Let's not just keep this to the, to the book here. This is generational. This is in 2024. The heads of Israel, the heads of the priesthood. They want you to be comfortable and not to move around by the things that they are saying. There is a consistent beef with this. Because by doing so, by not allowing movement, not talking about physical now. This is movement of the mind. This is movement of the fingers through pages. Through the comforting words that are spoken. What are the comforting words that are spoken? Savior by, by redemption, by blood, uh, afterlife, um, all of this, I don't have to go through it. Uh, doing the rituals and eating the thing and assimilating one with the thing that is eaten, the baptisms, the theories, the you, you can understand. These are the armholes on the chairs. This is the padding. This is the pillows. This is the pillows that are to keep the individual sitting and not moving. Because when you do move, as it says in Psalm 50, to the one that ordereth their conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God? The moment you move, 
The moment you begin to place in order the steps of your conversation without the pillows, without the seat, well, then that's the moment that the devotional conversations, thoughts, and feelings will begin to realize and experience the intended definition for the term salvation. Did you know that the concept of justification has more to do with what you believe than with you personally? There are many intricate factors of justification, but when you look at the bigger picture, all of those factors play a major role in both redefining and refreshing what you believe. Today's religious trajectory, for both the religious and the irreligious, makes it difficult to take the Bible seriously. I understand how that cannot seem like something right to say, but the traditional, spiritual, theological, esoteric, or superstitious character put onto the Bible leads both the religious and the irreligious down paths of no return. This program does the unthinkable. It explains the path of no return and also the path of return. The prophet Jeremiah advised to ask for the old paths to rest in those ways because that leads to rest for the soul. The old paths of justification are given to us in the book of Proverbs, in chapter 3, where it says to keep the words of the scriptures in our heart for receiving length of days and long life. Context matters. The issue of justification isn't about us, per se, but is about our heart. The only way to have justification is to have a personal experience with what extends one's days. No demigod can do this. The Bible is clear, experience, for the sake of bettering the belief, the words of the Bible and receive a clean heart of understanding. Thank you for watching Justification with Linwood. Still continuing and what I'm doing here is I'm wanting to bring out the notion and I'm not going to go through all of the verses, all of the connotations. I'm pointing out certain verses here to let you know that the controversy within the Bible, Genesis to Malachi, the sinners that the Bible's mind highlights, it is not with human beings. It is not with human beings. Transgression or wrong that is human is not the context of the Bible's philosophy. So I'm strictly dealing with Bible's philosophy. Personal moral regard, that's your own. Keep that to you. We keep that to ourselves. Bible's philosophy has a specific context of who transgressors are and what transgression is. Bible's main controversy is with transgressors. Yes, we understand this traditionally. What we don't understand and what we are misguided on are who transgressors are. We are assuming because a secular religion manifests with a physical human body and the sense between the two relate. If we have a spiritual inclination, a religious inclination, a philosophical inclination, a doctrinal inclination, we place that onto the Bible and think that that lifestyle is what the Bible's talking about when it's not at all, not even close. Bible has a controversy with transgressors and sinners. Yes, Bible's controversy with transgressors and sinners, the sinners and the transgressors are the priest kind. Why? The illustration of the garden tells us why. Even though I'm reading these examples, even though I'm, I'm Ezekiel is saying the armholes, they keep the people comfortable. This is phys, uh, uh, figurative illustration that the author of Ezekiel is using. They're making their listeners lazy is what that saying in Ezekiel. Isaiah, the leaders lead them to err. Even though I'm reading these verses, even though I'm saying all of this, even though I'm reading what the Bible is saying, the illustration in, in the book of Genesis articulates this fact perfectly. And it is articulating this fact held to no general priesthood. The issue in Genesis is recurring. This is a recurring issue. You may hear Israel in the books there. You may hear Jerusalem in the books there. There is no Israel, there is no Jerusalem mentioned in that garden scene because the Israel and the Jerusalem there is repeating and is recurring. This is a recurring issue. What happens after the book of Genesis in these scenes are reiterating the repeating issue 
found in Genesis 1, 2, and 3 philosophically. The issue is with priest kind. To Bible's mind, priest kind is sinner. And I'm keeping this only within Bible mind. Bible mind. So turning to Jeremiah 5, 29, 31. Jeremiah 5, 29 to 31 reads, Shall I not visit thee for these things? Saith the Lord, Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end therein? So the controversy is against the priesthood. But the flip side of this is that the individuals should be able to recognize the error of priest kind and priesthood, but they do not. It is much rather preferred. It is much rather preferred for priesthood and priest kind to lead. They love to have it so. This is not speaking about one individual congregation in one particular age. This is present tense language. I'm bringing all of this out because the issue in the garden scene has to do with the, the, the definition and how the Bible defines salvation priest kind and the formation of it is the error that the pair committed above an experience with personal understanding. The issue therefore, the issue henceforward is with the construction and the congregation and the host of what is priest kind for what is to aggravate and stimulate to their benefit, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. To the Bible's mind and to the author writing that illustration in Genesis there, letting their reader know, your salvation will come to you when you can do the opposite. Priest kind has a role to fulfill. Priest kind has a role to fulfill. Priest kind has a role to fulfill. Author of the book of Genesis is writing the way that they are writing because they want their reader and student and patient of their words to understand that although priest kind has a role to fulfill, their individual devotional conversation does not have to fulfill that role. There is an option. There is an option. You can rest under the trees and under the comfort of what priest kind offers. You can be priest kind, whether in your head or through organization. You can be priest kind. But you must know that if you will become priest kind, the route to actually understanding what you may be looking for within the scriptures will be blocked by imaginary figures and a bale. By imaginary figures and a dying and rising deity. Inevitable. You can lose the conscience of your conversation to that route, which it will get lost to. There's no question. This is a recurring thing articulated in the scriptures, and we can just use our eyes and mind in real life to see the fact. One will get lost. And when I'm saying lost, and when I'm saying one, the devotional conversation will find its experience halted and molested and manipulated 
by imaginary figures joined to a bale if it will move with priest kind. Because, to the Bible's mind, priest kind and the ambitions thereof are erroneous. If they were not erroneous, what was established at the east of that garden wouldn't be there. If they were not erroneous, the act of the pair would not have been as devastating as it was or is written of to be. When we get down to these figures and to the illustrations there and their connotations, when we're able to just strip uh, self from what we are reading and uh, traditional denominated understanding from what we are observing, when we are allowing the Bible to speak in its language to just flow into what it is, the answer's there. Author of the book of Genesis is giving their reader the code to what salvation is. And the code to what salvation is, it is everything opposite. It is everything opposite to what the pair in Eden inclined themselves towards. Everything opposite. And it just so happens that we're not going to know that. We're not going to know that. Because that figurative pair in every generation has the philosophy of life blocked by imaginary images joined to a bill. So what we get when we are born to the age that we are in, we get the established imaginary images and bail. And we have to be able to make the decision to choose the route when we have enough understanding out of that to understand those images in that bail for what it is, to discern the philosophy of salvation as the scriptures are saying. To the Bible's mind, the true essence of salvation is as I mentioned earlier from Psalm 50, whoso ordereth their conversation aright, this is the last verse of Psalm 50, will I show the salvation of God. If you are not willing to order your conversation aright. Because when the conversation is conceived, it is conceived in religious error. Because the leaders and their info are what help to conceive what we think is our belief. But it is on us to place in order our conversation. To move. To be uncomfortable. To be uncomfortable. Because only then will comfort arise and that's what it says in the book of Isaiah, isn't it? I am he that comforteth you. Well, to the Bible's mind, comfort doesn't mean good feeling. Comfort is learning, understanding, reordering mind for perception, conducting self through that reordering. Whoso will do this will understand the salvation of God. That's what the illustration of Genesis is showing that's the, that, that's the underlying theme um, throughout the scriptures that that author of Genesis is highlighting. Our faith is alive. Our belief is a living structure. But what does it mean to have a working faith? What does it mean to have a belief assisting our thoughts and feelings? A faith that works is a book informing its reader on how to cultivate an active faith. We usually have to make our faith work. We usually need to do something in order for us to feel like our faith is alive. Is this the right way to handle our devotional experience? Find correct guidance and instruction on how to carry the body of your faith in A Faith That Works. So what is the role of priest kind? Looking at Matthew, Matthew 16, 11 and 12, Matthew 16 verses 11 and 12. How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not be aware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. What is this doctrine? Turning to Mark 7. Mark 7 and verse 9. He said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your own tradition. Now, this verse is taken from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 29, 13 and 14. Wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, 
do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me, their fear toward me, their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Now, if there is a call for something to perish, does that mean that what is supposed to perish is in a good condition? Now, it is a good condition to the priest kind, but not to the mind within the scriptures. The idea of what is to perish, is it good if it is to perish? The notion of rule by precept of men is the role that priest kind is supposed to play. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, one to make one wise, and one to make one appear refined. What does that sound like to you? When you understand what the concept of tree is of the Bible's mind. When you understand that what this woman experienced, this figurative woman experienced, was the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. What initiated, what initiated and moved them to create girdles was the desire for priesthood, was the, was the desire for to be priest kind. Rule by knowledge of good and evil to become gods. We understand what this means now. That language is broken down. Rule by predicted outcome from preordained action. That's religious law. To be gods. Not in the sense of the deities. To the Bible's mind, this is still priest kind. This is still prophet kind. All through the book of Genesis is writing this, and they're writing it in a very colorful way, but they're writing this to let their reader know that their salvation, the intended salvation, it arises when able, when the conversation is able to step away from what this representation is. Now you're going to have to go through some imaginary figures in a bale to get there. But if you're able to maintain that, if you're able to maintain that, despite what you assume the Bible to be saying, despite what you assume your thoughts to be conveying, despite what you assume from traditional theory and from priest kind, you're then able to see the controversy. You're then able to see and separate what the issue is. The issue is lifestyle, maintenance of lifestyle from what is given by priest kind, maintenance of lifestyle from what is given by experience with words. This is Bible gospel. This is Bible tidings. These are the good tidings of the Bible. The good tidings of the Bible is the conversations, the devotional conversations, resurrection from the dust, familiar language. This is all for the devotional conversations, thoughts, feelings, actions, and behaviors arising from dust. Doing contrary to what the pair in Eden inclined themselves to. Bible salvation, the definition of, the, of salvation from the mind inspiring these words, these illustration, these illustrations, is counsel and advice to the individual conversation that what is going on within the religious world and within priest kind, that's their, that's their role, that's going to be fulfilled. That's the blueprint. So don't fall for the blueprint. Don't fall for the blueprint. Recognize that the blueprint isn't you. The blueprint will be what it is for who it will be. That's not for you. That path leads to nowhere. 
that path leads to a an endless search that is covered by imaginary images in a bale that will never be found out. What is for you is the reorganization of your conversation's conscience away from that into an experience where devotional enlightenment, where devotional enlightenment is, is not the only thing that is given, but where that is inspiring the influence upon the human being for character. It was a twofold work when you're allowing that quote unquote tree of life to be the deciding factor of the experience. The personal and the devotional life is benefited. When you're going the other route of the knowledge of good and evil, when you are imagining yourself to be as the gods, or when you are in the organization to become one, you're losing focus for both of these things, the personal and the devotional conversation, and you are getting wrapped up into a matrix that is unending and that will leave you just as it left that pair which is kicked out of the route for the philosophy of life and fending for your own self to find whatever you must, to cope with whatever you must, instead of facing the face, the self of the personal and the devotional conversations.